Hi, my name is Jorentje Hendricks and I'm an associate professor in marine geoscience and researcher here at Uppsala University and the Department of Earth Sciences. My research is bridging the fields of geology and biology because I look um, into the linkage between marine phytoplankton, tiny algae that grow in the sea, and um, climate change, where the link exists in the fact that these marine algae, they fix a lot of carbon through the process of photosynthesis. Um, they take CO2 out of the atmosphere and build that into their organic tissue and use that to grow. And they form the basis of the, the food web in the marine environment. So a lot of this carbon and energy is transferred as food for you know, larger animals and fish. They, um, in part, the carbon is uh, not fully recycled and, and put back into the atmosphere. So part of this fixed carbon actually is lost to the atmosphere and is uh, transferred to deeper parts of the oceans where the uh, carbon is um, stored for much uh, longer time scales, like 100 to many thousands years. And part of that organic carbon also reaches the deep sea sediments and is buried into the sediments where um, it's, it is locked away from the atmosphere for millions of years. And in fact, that process itself over long timescales, geological timescales of millions of years has produced a lot of the resources that we are using uh, today, such as oil and gas. And what we are doing since the Industrial Revolution is reversing that process really rapidly. So in, in just a matter of uh, a few hundred years, we are outgassing that CO2 back into the atmosphere and so the atmospheric levels um, of CO2 are rapidly rising. And one main question that we pose in, in our research is to see whether the phytoplankton in, in the ocean will actually be able to cope with such a rapid change because we also know from, from the geological record that um, given time biota or organisms can adapt to climate uh, change and perturbations but our worry is that the current perturbation or change uh, we are incurring is, is very rapid and let's say not seen uh, previously in our uh, Earth's history. So our, our um, model organism group are the coccolithophores, they are single-celled um, marine algae, they calcify they not only photosynthesize, but they also calcify, by which they also build some carbon into um, uh, their calcite. And these um, algae, they, they surround their cells by these little calcite platelets. And so they live our life today and we can bring them to the lab and, and do uh, experiments with elevated temperature, elevated CO2, different levels of nutrients to see how they respond to such um, uh, changes. But that's rather short term, that would not you know, be measured in, in millions of years, that's a week or a month that your uh, experiment is, is, is conducted. So for understanding the adaptive uh, potential, so whether these algae may be able to adapt to the new situation or the new climate um, um, regime, is to actually look at the fossil record. And because of these coccolids, these calcite platelets, we have a uniquely um, diverse and, and, and complete record of these algae going back uh, many millions of years. And so we study these um, fossils, the microfossils in uh, deep sea sediments that have been collected by the Integrated Ocean Drilling Program and ocean drilling programs that have run since 50 years now. And those are you know, nice little archives, uh, history books of ocean, oceanographic change and climate change. And by looking at the, the fossil record of these algae, we have now found that indeed these algae are very well capable of adapting to uh, rapid or, or 
uh, large uh, changes in, for instance, uh, atmospheric CO2. But in the past, these changes have taken many millions of years to, to occur. And so uh, we are still questioning and, and researching into uh, the effects of much uh, uh, more rapid changes in, in atmospheric CO2 and how it will um, affect these marine phytoplankton.